Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. A good leader, listen, doesn't maintain followers. A good leader, according to a great mentor, turns followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. Are we together now? Yes. And um, this is absolutely brilliant that at this level, he's already reaching out to people, very quality content, intelligently written, and very sound and all of that. So I thought to support him. I usually will not do this, but I made up my mind that I was going to endorse his book. I know that a number of you have all kinds of things that you do. Um, I'm very particular about excellence. It's not enough for you to have good content. It should be something that um, reflects what you are being taught here. So this is his book. It's a wonderful book. And um, I think he wrote it, if I'm not mistaken, with a bias for those who are from maybe 24 years downwards to help them maximize this phase of their lives. But I don't think it's limited to just people under 25. Um, it's a very wonderful book. And um, he brought a few copies. I want to encourage you to please get it. You can drop it with the uh, PR at the PR stand, the public relations stand there. And um, doesn't mean next week you carry your book and bring. This is a particular favor I'm doing him. We are very disciplined people. Don't go and drop your book just because I'm doing this. This is something God put in my heart, and I think he deserves it. I've watched him grow and develop his leadership. Praise the Lord. And so I just thought, let's support him. I don't believe that he wrote the book just to make money. The, the, the kind of teaching and transformation that you are receiving here, you know that um, if you commit yourself to this just to feed yourself, then you are very small. You should have impact at heart. But then as you do that, there will always be a system of reward. Praise the Lord. How much does this go for? 1,000. This goes for 1,000. So please support him. You can buy, buy for your children. Um, how many copies are here? 200. So outside, you can pick for your children, pick for a few people. And um, our teenagers, I would, I would, I would, let me start by at least speaking for those who, to support it all. Let's see how we can support our teenagers, teenagers, our teenagers in this place. Teenagers means from 18 years. If you are 19, you are not a teenager. 18 years to 11. 11 to 18 years some of our young people here is a thousand um thousand naira so please you can support him and um let's see how we can do so we'll pick i'll pick 50 copies huh? and let's give our teenagers this is this is to support him and to support our young people so if you know you are 11 to 18 years after the service you can Behave like a responsible person. Go and stand at the PR uh, stand or wherever they would indicate for you. Please, no collecting for your child. If you are not a teenager, just go home. You can buy and give the person. That is our gift 
to our teenagers to support them. And God will not be happy with you when God raises someone to pay for a book and you carry it and go and throw it there. I think if you carry the book or you just buy the book and drop it or you buy for your child and they drop it, you have wasted your money. So please, our teenagers here, if you pick this book, go and sit down with another notebook and read it with all your heart. And I'm sure you should be able to see him to ask a few questions. Lord, we thank you for this. We dedicate it in the name of Jesus. Let this inspire a lot of other people who have visions but are afraid to take steps. Grace for them in the name of Jesus. We pray that you bless Emmanuel. We speak to this book. We give it life. We give it wings. Let it go far. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm very proud of you. Praise the Lord. The Lord put just one word in my heart for us tonight and then we'll pray. Just one word and then we'll pray. As I prepared for this meeting, I sense that one of the things that the Lord will be doing is tonight to employ the power of prophecy. Prophecy is very powerful. I don't know how many times I will teach and encourage us believe in prophecy now there are imbalances here there are exaggerations here there are dabblings here and there but you will be mistaken to ever want to rise ignoring the power of prophecy and as i explored the spirit of god took me to a scripture that blessed me so much just one scripture and then we'll pray hallelujah ezra chapter 6 By the way, wonderful, wonderful testimonies. How many of you were blessed by the testimonies? Remember that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means that when you listen, it puts faith in your heart and you commit God to reproduce the same result. Powerful testimony. Um, and then for the gentleman to hear, Kai, God, eh? God has been good to us so I hope you know that koinonia honestly speaking sometimes we get used to these miracles we get used to you know my prayer every time is Lord I know I'm the one you are using but may I never get used to your power it's easy coming here tonight my prayer is not oh God move mm -mm. my prayer is oh God bless your people I don't pray and say, Lord, make sure your anointing works. Um, that's, that's not a wise prayer. The issue is not for the anointing to work. The issue is that it be done as it is in heaven. Exactly what God wants delivered. And I just sat down. I said, God, you have been good to me and you have been good to us as a family of faith. So I think it's a wonderful thing that I don't think we should take for granted. Praise the Lord. In all your ways, this is already a word for someone, in all your ways, sometimes we are very quick to see what God has not done. Yet the miracle is in thanking him for what he has done. The last gentleman, his testimony blessed me so much. He saw that his brother or his son or whatever, had something had started. Many people would say, God, I'm watching. God will say you won't see the rest because you are not a grateful person. Ten lepers were sent. They were healed. Only one returned back and said, Lord, I'm grateful. He said, were there not ten of you? Where are the other nine? And he said, you, you are whole. So learn, learn to acknowledge everything. If you tell God, give me ten naira and someone calls you and say, I will give you money, start thanking him. Don't say, Lord, it has not come. Lord, the fact that you can think about that. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Learn this. My entire life, 80% of my prayer is thanksgiving. There is what God does for you. You almost feel guilty asking for anything again. Are we together now? The grace of God. 
while I sat back there, I was just watching this. I said, my God. Now this gentleman, think of what his testimony will do to the salvation of someone. These are the kinds of testimonies that will force unbelievers to go and think. You can't hear this kind of testimony and pretend they are called notable miracles. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. God, what's that song? Menei da kasoni haka. Menei da kasoni haka. Where's the gentleman? He's not here. Menei da kasoni haka. Amende ya figo dia chinezamba. Amende ya figo dia chinezamba. It's a chant I like. Jews, listen, build it and they prospered. How? Through the prophesyings of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. They prospered through the prophesying, not through building materials. They prospered. They were building while he was speaking. And the Bible says the secret of their prosperity was that there was the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edo. They said they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. God commanded it. The prophets prophesied it. The men built it and the building finished. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The Bible says they prospered not through the quality of their building materials. They prospered not just through the quality of their leadership. The Bible says they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet. They prospered through the prophesying. They were healed through the prophesying. Their lives changed through the prophesying. These were prophets I'm sure when the prophets spoke to them, they said, okay, let's watch to see what happens. But they forgot that God confirms the words of his prophets. When I found this scripture, it blessed me in no small way. So I can prosper through prophecy. I can prosper through prophecy. Prosperity there doesn't just mean to have money. It means to excel. It means to do well. That means my life can change. You've heard me say it again and again that the prophetic is powerful. When the prophetic is used accurately and within the context of its relevance, there is no limit, no limit to what it can produce. Very simple scripture tonight. They build it. So the Bible is honest to tell us they were building but that the energy, the spiritual factor responsible for that prophecy is not the dexterity of their building, but through the prophesying, not the prophecy, the prophesying, continual speaking. Not that he spoke once. They didn't just prosper through his prophecy. He's prophesying. So he said, in the name of Jesus, God bless you. And they came back again. We are building and he said, you just build while I speak. They prospered through the prophesying. I have seen what prophecy can do. The Bible is full of the wonders that happened to men when the spirit of prophecy was allowed to find expression. 
the power of prophecy was classically shown in the vision of Ezekiel. The Bible lets us know that Ezekiel was taken to a valley that was full of dry bones. Listen carefully. The Bible says the bones were very dry. Not only very dry, the bones were not together. The fact that you cannot find it does not mean it's not available. The bones were there. They were out of sight, but they were still in existence, waiting for prophecy to bring them together. Are you getting what I'm saying? For as long as a prophetic word did not come, those bones remained there. And then he says, son of man, can these bones live? He says, only thou knowest. And then he said, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God commands and you prophesy, he confirms. I prophesied not as I wanted, not as I chose to, but as I was commanded. And the next thing that happened was there was a sound, the Bible says. That shaking and bones began to look for themselves. Bones talk of structures structures son of man prophesy again to the four winds and say O winds breathe upon this slain and he prophesied again as commanded and the bible declares that the wind came entered into these bodies without life and they arose an exceeding great army i believe with all my heart that's what god is going to do over someone's life Son of man, can this situation live again? Son of man, can your life live again? Son of man, can your finances live again? Can the fire upon your life be rekindled again? Can the doors be opened again? Again means once upon a time, they were not bones. They never started as bones. They started as an army something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry another incident the bible says that the sons of the prophet were with elisha and they said where we meet with you is too small let us go beyond the jordan and the bible says he granted them permission and while they were cutting the tree the axe head fell and one of the sons of the prophet said alas master for it was borrowed you thought that the prophet would sit down and say, Talk, what do we do? He said, no, where fell it? And he showed him the place and he carried a stick. A stick. God's methodology sometimes can be strange, but it works. That's why you have to walk by faith. Listen, very simple teaching tonight, but it will change your life. And he threw that stick and against gravity, the axe head began to float. Another time, there was hunger in the land of Samaria. The hunger was so bad that the Bible records that women were eating their children. Nigeria has not gotten to that level. I'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry. I'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit. But that hunger will make a mother. Imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day. Two women. Remember that was the agreement. There was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything. Imagine the hunger. That means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a, a plate of food is not up to a child's head. Yet two people ate a whole child. Is that a normal hunger? No. And by the next day, it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman. And she protected the child. And that was where fight came from. That means hunger can bring fight. That means one of the principles of peace is abundance. That when there is enough, there is love. There is understanding. Is that true? Hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends. But that's not my point. The king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry. 
and say, where is this man? Where is this prophet? Let's, 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 the anger. What is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said, abundance will come, it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it. Notice that every time the prophets speak, they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless. They are called timeless possibilities. Possibilities with no time frame attached to them. It is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation. Listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things. One, that your life synchronizes with God's predeterminate counsel. Are we together? Or number two, that by the power of prophecy, a time is allocated to that possibility and made to find expression on earth. It is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities. Prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very powerful. Remember, you cannot do anything about time. Once time passes, that's it. But the Bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again. So if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb, what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets. You see that? Prophecy. The victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. Please listen. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. The victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit. Like spiritual archaeologists exploring the height, the width, the depth of the ways of God. And like archaeologists, when we find something that we think is worthy of note, we treasure it. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl. Is that true? And the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it. The Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot, that entire estate. So we continue to search and the Bible says everyone that seeketh finds. If you are serious enough and desperate, the spirit of revelation will come. You will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual. Lord, if you, if you will show me, show me, are you not God? Open my eyes, let me see. No, you will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity. You can discern diligence. He is the rewarder of not them that seek him, them that diligently seek him. Lord, I won't let you go. Open my eyes. Show me the key. I, I, I admit that I don't know much, but Lord, open my eyes. And then the spirit of revelation comes. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. Daniel prayed and said, I'm not leaving this place. 
Lord, you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do. 20 and one days he was there traveling. And then the angel came, granted him access to revelation. And he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. It was not just a book like opening to read. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. So, the, you must not only know what God has prepared for you. You must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them alienated that means that your life does not become a reflection of what God has said and the Bible says it doesn't mean he lied but that something about your life and my life there is a level of understanding understanding of what not just an information the ways of God are we together now please give me this this is a bottle of water look up please everyone this is a bottle of water now, it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if I open this bottle, I'm going to have an enjoyable experience. Is that true? Now, you have given me the bottle, but there is a technology to open it. If you turn this thing clockwise, it will not open. Is that true? The system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes. As simple as this instruction is, you can die of test. Not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water scammed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me. Come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside. As rich as you are, have you ever lost your ATM and you stand angry as rich as you are? They just made a transfer and you are hungry. The ATM is looking at you, you are looking at it. The difference between you and your breakthrough is that ATM. Imagine how small things cause big trouble. Small key, ATM. That's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link. You've done step A, B, C, D. Step E, which is the last step, you may not know and stay there for 10 years until God by his mercy comes. For some of you, that last step is what you are getting tonight. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link that you have done what you know? The shop is already there. The goods are already there. But for some strange reasons, the customers do not come. Your certificate is already there. The application has been submitted. But you are building with intelligence. You are building. But the prophecy that will make that building finish, 
The Bible did not say they started building. It says the building finished. This is a secret that worked in my own life. This is the secret that is working in this ministry. They built and they finished through the power of prophecy. I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy, especially the creative dimension of prophecy, that you can speak over someone's life. You can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken. Let me tell you this. You know I told you something. Anything that is a blessing is not tangible. It's not physical. Whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing. Yes, we say that you were blessed, but the truth is you were supported. Blessings are always spiritual. Read your Bible. You don't bless men with what money can buy. You don't bless people with material things. So I can give you money. You say I bless you. It's true. But the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that and he's surprised in two months he has opened another branch he doesn't know what happened whether you know a law is there or not once you engage it it works for your favor or not for your favor i jump from here by mistake i will fall gravity will not say no i'm aware he's joking it's an example no there are no examples with laws You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are, I will, I will come out when you, no. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think in the US, he said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums. You would think that, okay, he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that. And then this man will say, okay, come with everything you are building. My job is to keep speaking while you build. And you find out the buildings always get completed. When you build while a voice is speaking, it must finish. The same way a voice was speaking while God was building. God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build. We get the raw materials. And then we say, based on this and that and that, I will build this great destiny. In the name of Jesus, we, we can be well-meaning. And then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise. And you can't trace, based on your architecture, nothing is wrong. That building is supposed to finish, yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom, we build and prosper through the prophesyings. Not just through intentions. It was Bishop Oyedeko who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed, you know, he came and he was going to run an errand for him. And he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him. And he looked at him and wanted to reward him. I hope I'm right with the story. And then he opened, you know, a compartment full of money. And then Bishop Oedeko would not take and say, no, I don't want this. And he looked at him and blessed him. And he says, from today, God has given you the grace of on time. That before a need arises, the supplies are there. Now, that's how to bless. So he can now go and build because there is prophecy. Listen, unbelievers know this. They prepare their work together 
then they now go to dark powers and say i'm ready to build i'm ready for election I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys, the power not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was, they didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone, three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to her and put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth, right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe if they would induce or do something, or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out, like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata prakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying. Words 
are like trays in the realm of the spirit. Come, hold this for me. No, Ejimi, don't worry. Let him do it. Hold the tray, not the water. Put it down and hold the tray. This is how words are in the realm of the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words carry things. Words are trays in the spirit. It is not the words that bless you. The words contain mysteries. So the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger. When it delivers, it returns back and says, I have done what you sent me to do. Then he sends the word on Aaron again. Listen. Words are not just talkings. Because when Isaac, listen, blessed Jacob, Esau came and said, don't you have any other thing? He said, it is finished. Was the talking finished? So words are not just speaking. You are a boy. Yes, you said that is word in English. But in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I I I do a lot of conga and jumia, and sometimes they just call me and say, We are within vicinity, can we come? And the moment I hear the sound of their van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package. Then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for. That thing, the van will return back because it needs to come back again. But what it brought is what stays with me. Many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking. Be blessed. That thing is not the English. It's just a word prophesied to you. It transported something spiritual. So when it enters your ears, the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit. And then the be blessed English now just goes out. So you know that words were spoken. And then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service. But then you go back and find out your life starts changing. Someone who has no business blessing you. And you say, Lord, when did that happen? That is why deafness is a terrible thing. Are we together now? That you cannot hear. The word cannot come. The entrance of thy word. So, listen to me. Understand how this works. Come, stand here. This gentleman, just stand here. This is favor. This is what this guy wants. This is favor. This is what he desperately needs. And God carries that favor and puts it upon words. And the messenger is not a prophet. The messenger is the prophecy. The prophecy is what brings it to him. As many as received him, meaning you can reject him. The word can come, but you will say, it's not trade that I want. I need this. And then the word returns back with the gift and say, I was rejected when I got to that address. Then when you pray again, God will say, by my mercy, let's try again. And the word comes and you don't receive it. And it goes back. He sent forth his word. When they received the word, the word healed them. The word delivered them. So he sent forth healing. He sent forth deliverance. But they were carried in a tray called words. This is the mystery 
men receive that's why when you see people talk about the word word most people even those who teach it they don't even really fully understand what they are saying they think it is speakings that gives you intelligence no words convey information they convey thoughts but that's not the only thing they do they are mighty systems of impartation I can be sitting here right now and yet I'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me the minister is the word are you getting what I'm saying now that means no matter where you are the moment the words begin to come and the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word so I can sit down and say Lord send me a word for my breakthrough and God will say that's it everyone that ask it receive it and he puts that word and you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus let doors be open and you say that's it you did not see that that word was carrying something you receive that word the miracle in it will start working you don't receive the healing you receive the word the healing was designed to work when the word is received when you enter a city Jesus was teaching, find out whether there be a house of peace. When you find it there, he says, let what is on you rest there. When you don't find anybody that receives you, let your peace rest with you. Meaning there are things that rest, return, are received, are rejected. These are some of the things that govern the results that we get. Look at the wonderful, that adorable lady that shared her testimony from Lagos. Words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and HIV of 24 years. When the word gets to HIV, HIV is a spirit, so it knows it's not words that it's seen. Remember when men saw the word, they saw a man. When demons saw the word, they saw the life-giving power of God. They looked at Jesus and, ah, you see, not this guy, this, this 33-year-old body is fooling people. This is not 33-year-old. This is the ancient of days, hidden in a 33-year-old body. But men were looking at the son of Mary. But principalities and powers knew what they were seeing. When a prophet saw Jesus, he said, Behold the lamb. You would think it's an insult. You are calling me an animal. He was speaking prophetically. The same way you can look at Gideon and say, Oh, mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, Where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water. And look at your destiny you can use the word and look there's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion very powerful so you can come here weak and then God comes to you and says no you are not supposed to be that and he says this is your image and say Lord I agree I see it the word is received the power as many as received that word he gave them power that came with the word to become power to become as many as received him even to them that called upon his name he gave them power to become power to become an apostle power to become a prophet power to become prosperous power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down power to silence the voices of darkness thank you this is how fathers blessed throughout the Bible all the sons knew that they didn't they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep they gave them those things but they knew it was temporal but the moment they received something on their head the fathers told them bye bye and never cared to find out are you doing well because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together let me tell you if someone counts come Sam come this lady if this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea you gave them gifts not a blessing now there's nothing wrong with that they will carry those things and somebody can steal it 
but when you speak over their lives those words remain and start working so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble ordinarily he would have been a victim but something that was on him will move him the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous there is something that you can receive and where there is a job that is your own you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say I just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys I say, what is, is it that I'm not beautiful it's not about beauty it's about what happened that's why the Bible says God can deliver men from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can use words to program something on you and just say go now you will because you didn't feel anything that word remains this gentleman is standing here he's supposed to marry her but something on her is fighting him you are supposed to get a job the person promised heaven and said and just a signature to get that job but something on you make sure that your paper is taken away from the list this is what we came to correct tonight that by the power of prophecy that that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen someone can look at you and say man of god you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate when did you get born again and you say it's not my fault it's what is on me something on me draws the right people and you find out listen listen that's why you find out there are churches you always find the right keyboardist the right drummer they are looking for pastors you find the right pastors and it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them there is a spirit somebody enters that town and says I want to come and fellowship with Koinonia they didn't just come the day you are announcing your book that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city he didn't just come something on you controls everything around you so the key is not to try to change things buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head that negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life please take serious what i'm saying many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret in this kingdom we build but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it listen remember you can't get to the office but there's something that can get there i'm not motivating you believe me and that word will rest on your employment letter and the, the man is pushing everything and he just picks yours now remember the man may not be born again so he can't explain what is happening because he operates in the three-dimensional realm the word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man and because he's empowered by God's integrity he must hear it and he looks and says who is this what tribe ah I, the slot is for five people from the north who is this Yoruba girl now who knows maybe she doesn't have a father or mother and they take this and you get a job that you sit down and say ah, ah, what is this again 
if you don't believe this, then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squallow that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished. Go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we are going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I'd like you to declare. Declare and pray. Please pray. Take it seriously. The things that must shift in your life, the things that must change in your life, is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. in the spirit that there are handwritings there are ordinances 
that are written upon men like a stigma, like a karagma. The mystery of the tragedy of Jabez was a word that became his name by his mother. And Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. It's not my fault that I came from this family. Words are erasers. They can erase anything. They can erase anything. Because those words are bought by the blood of the eternal covenant. They can erase curses. They can erase yokes. They can erase witchcraft. They can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you. Spoke against your family. And said it will never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray. And say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams, bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to the cross. social media platforms and a system was programmed that when you forget your password there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page and for some reason you can forget your password there is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You, it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. cooperate with me 
I want us to finish very fast. And so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time. But I want you to please believe. Are we together? Words can bring things. And words can carry things out of your life. Was it not because Jonah entered a boat? Innocent people on a voyage. A man carried something. Entered their boat. They lost properties. Lost. They were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me. Throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements, you must carry them. And say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my By the spirit of might, in the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual. But Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three. My God, I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four. Get ready now. Five. Let that fire right now. In the name of Jesus, everything in your life that must leave, I declare right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ bring them out outside everywhere overflow one two three the roadside online I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost the Word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place I declare and I prophesy I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family into every destiny and I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight. Therefore, I declare judgment. Judgment upon the hand of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Judgment upon the wicked. Judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. The spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors listen over life if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open no matter what you do something is about to happen to you now lift your hands father i declare anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors shakatabata now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of Jesus, I judge that spirit. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances that close doors. Let doors be open now over lives, over destinies. Be open now outside. Be open inside. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium. And I'm going to speak now. When I speak, those chains that I see, Sakotos Katabarakatojetia, you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service. Lord Jesus, I declare, anyone being tied down by any chain, I declare right now, let the fire of the... It could be chains that are 
territorial it could be chains of wickedness i command a release right now in the name of jesus i command a release right now i command a release right now a release right now a release right now What I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi state Kogi state you know what happens when God shows me this that means people from that state the power of God begins to touch them right now in the name of Jesus I declare the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare, may that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the spirit. Run by the spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here. Just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing. Right here. I decree and I prophesy. Right now in the name of Jesus, let the yokes of darkness, the ordinances of witchcraft, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, and the Kalakata Katakata, Rakata Bakatos, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now, I declare devil must let you go. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now be set free in the name of Jesus. All those in front, I declare the count of three. The spirit that manifested must let you go. I speak as one sent from God. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go. Go, go, go. Out of their lives and out of their destinies. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many people are 
trusting God for jobs. You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are designed to receive miracle jobs through these impartations. Where are they, oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Sebahasha. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Who is Yakubu? Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol, come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around one finances two i'm seeing you climbing ladders in the spirit and i decree and declare over you it must be so right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ if i start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir god is about to change your life come Where are you coming? Please stand up, please stand up, sir. Where are you coming from? From Sabongari. I want to pray for you. Where do you stay? Sir, I don't mean to scare you. Are we together now? I'm not a prophet of doom. But this you're coming here now has saved you from dying. You have been having dreams. You have been having dreams dreams. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Dead people. Yes, you see dead people in dreams. I have seen them. This is what I'm saying. If you did not come here, I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came. You're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you. That's how they left you on the ground there. But in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit behind, why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death? I just saw like an arrow right now. Any family here any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus God of wonders will do wonders in their lives. Agree with them very quickly. Please don't doubt what you are doing. Those who are standing, trust God to touch you. Trust God to return with a testimony. Who have come with all kinds of situations. Arise, O oh God, in your power. Wrought wonders in the name of Jesus. Let your people return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Quickly, please. Please. Um, except the people speak to you and I would, please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush. As hands are laid on you, please believe. Don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me. It's a corporate grace that is working here. And for those of us who are seated, the worship team will be ministering, but don't just sit and just be looking I'd like you to believe because immediately after this, I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around. If you have your prayer request while the service is going on, whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people, PR protocol, please join the people so that we'll make it fast. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.
please make sure if you have not submitted your prayer request, do it very quickly. Do it very quickly. We'll pray one prayer point before you continue. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every delayed promise say it again that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month lift your voice and pray 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 delayed promise Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into it. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. online I want you to believe pray believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ pray this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees I bow my knees I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. Visit impossible situations, O God of heaven. In the 
name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role, to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life. Let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong. And may they correct it. Every anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now, and by some activity of darkness, it has not yet touched your head. I declare, may that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. Remember what I taught you about words. Never forget, words are trains. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, touched the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen, we want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. So why do we preach? For his glory. Why are you on that job? For his glory. When your life becomes a reflection of God's glory, there's no limit to what he can give or make out of your life. Praise the Lord. And um, we want to take it a little further tonight. You will be so blessed and I pray that your heart will be opened in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 1, Paul was speaking to the Galatian church, verse 24, 23, 24, please. Galatians chapter 1. Let's hurry up media so that we can do much today as God grants us grace. Galatians 1. I'll read 23 and then we'll read 24 together. It's projected. It says, but they had heard only. This was Paul speaking about his conversion and how the news spread among the brethren believers. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preached the faith which you want destroyed 24 i want you to read it with all your heart one to read one more time there are many ways god can be glorified one of the ways the bible shows us that god can be glorified is in a person and they glorified god not just through me they glorified god there was something they saw about my life and when they saw it, they said, no, God, you must be glorified. And tonight, I want to challenge us along that line. Since we had discussed last week that the, the hallmark of the Christian experience is not just doing things. It's not even singing, worshiping, fasting, praying, doing all of these things as spiritual as they are. It is getting to a point where Christ be enthroned. But then we must understand that much more than Christ being enthroned, he wants our lives to be a reflection of his glory that's how he gets the glory he says and they glorified god in me hallelujah this is a system for god to be glorified because god is in heaven and cannot be seen with the physical eyes we are his representatives the bible calls us his ambassadors and because we are his ambassadors we promote his interest we are the reflection we give men who do not know God an idea of what God is are we together just like um, when I look at you I may not know how your father or your mother looks but I can suspect I look at you and I say wow it means your father can be this can be that and the day I see your mother I say no wonder you see the similarity so God expects that he our father who has not been seen people we should begin to give people ideas of what he is the fullness of all that is contained in him should already be experienced through our lives 
and in our lives let me show you something jesus said in john 15 john 15 verse 8 we'll look at it in king james and then if we can get amplified that will be fine john 15 verse 8 jesus was speaking and this is what he said listen herein is my father glorified that means in this this is the pathway to giving my father glory if you ever are interested in seeing my father glorified this is the road to follow like you teach someone how to cook and you say look if you want a delicious meal of jollof rice this is what you do so he's giving us the pathway say hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear much fruit not little fruit much fruit so shall ye be my disciples i love the amplified rendition is it possible for us to have it oh it's not possible amplified puts it in a very very beautiful way amplified actually connects it and it says by so doing it is in your bearing fruit you prove that you were trained by me i didn't watch a lot of movies but there used to be these movies about kung fu fighting and um, the little I know about those movies, every master had children, all these small boys that he trains around. And occasionally, they have competitions. Is that true? Where different schools come. So, the masters don't fight. They train you and sit behind. And those who they train will compete. When they beat you and they whip you, you don't get angry. The one who trained you, is the one who gets angry because it means your school is bad it means it's not good so the pride of the master they bring their best uh what they call it their best fighters are we together and when when the other person is beating someone else you see the master nodding in agreement that's right i taught him this i remember that skill that that is me that's what i would have done there i would have punched him in that exact way you got him right and when he wins he run, he does not run out and just he runs back to the master and say job done as you taught me i broke his leg i destroyed him the bible is saying god is watching i have given you the word i expect something it's like an investment i made on you and god is watching my reputation is at stake at the mercy of your living out the fullness of all that i am and so he says i am waiting satan also releases his arsenals we meet in a big stage called the earth here and god is standing in heaven and satan is saying you drove me but watch what happens watch the nonsense i'm going to make out of those you claim you died for and then he whips us with everything from sickness to failure and then he not only whips us he educates us into believing it is God and to increase the mockery we now turn and say Lord I thank you because this has to be you and Satan says God how about that I told you if I don't get you directly I look for your image are we together now hearing is my father glorified that after a season of training you he gives you access to the word he now begins to watch when your life begins to be a reflection of his dominion when your life begins to be a reflection of his excellence when your life begins to bear fruit your life now begins to testify so when someone reads in the bible and says ah god is faithful he looks around where is the scripture i can relate with this that scripture it's not first corinthians that scripture is called pastor alpha he's a life a living epistle that explains that scripture so the testimonies you see that you know why we clap you know why god was also clapping in heaven because their lives all those who came here their lives are testaments of men and women who engage the word and it produced results so why do we clap we clap because we are saying satan shame unto you are we together now satan you tried to kill that lady but she's standing and walking on two legs you wanted to ground her legs to walk on wheelchair forever but something about the world she engaged a principle and it brought that result so god is glorified that's why it is called a testimony that means the only way god is glorified is when your life becomes an unending script of testimonies that reveal the multifaceted possibilities in God.
that your life can be a book someone can read and say my god you mean god is this mighty i never knew but haven't heard of what has happened to a jimmy i know god is mighty hearing is my father oh they found it when you bear or produce much fruit listen it says my father is honored are you seeing that now and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers when you give birth to a son who does not look like the father and the mother do you know that that child can create argument one day the man can call the mother during a heated conversation and say look there's something that's been bothering me for 12 years i am deeply concerned about the way this guy is behaving and how he's looking is there any story you want to share with me my heart is open why because that child is not reflect it doesn't look like the father doesn't talk like the father does he, there is nothing about the father not even the mother so they begin to ask a question are we together so god is counting you know we brag with his name and he expects that something about our results should have his stamp on it if you walk in julius badger you should be able to show me their id card one day otherwise i know you are a liar and you are a crook are we together if you mold block as a julius badger worker you should be able to throw it up and it should not break on the ground that's how i know that you are not the person who just did that thing and, and i mean if you did it with julius Berger, it should come in with excellence but we claim we know him eh, jimmy we claim we have met him we even claim he spoke to us and then our lives show we don't know him at all i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good I will worship him forever. Love him forever because his God is too good. See, our lives are supposed to explain scripture. Our lives are supposed to be an explanation to every aspect of scripture. Because Satan's assignment is to prove that everything about God is a lie. His statements, his resurrection, his goodness. When you say God is a good God, Satan says, all right, me, I don't talk too much, but I act. How many times have you heard Satan talk? Satan is a good actor. We talk too much. Satan says, you keep shouting God is a good God. I will wreck your life into pieces and then you show me the goodness of God. And God says, forget about Satan. I have created a system that if you act out, you will stamp Satan in a way that you will prove that what I said is true. But largely we ignore God and then we never get the results. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If the only reason why you want results is because of your ego, you will never be serious about it are you hearing what i'm saying you know let me tell you something and i admit i'm sorry if i sound proud but one of the gifts that god has given me i cried for it and god gave me one of the gifts that god has given me to bless the body with is balance 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 is the most scarce resource among men of god not revelation not apostasy the biggest problem with preachers is imbalance the ability to construct truth so that it is communicated within the jurisdiction of its relevance and the danger is that our societies are a reflection of the ideologies of different men of god you can see that from 1985 to 1940 this when this man of god held the pulpit this is what he taught a nation they thought like that this is what they became imbalance is as deadly as error are we together so when we begin to communicate the truths of scripture it is important that we must approach scripture with a view to bring him balance so that the bride of christ can be built in a way that she is equal in length equal in breadth equal in height i was discussing with eddie while he drove me here and i was telling him i said you look at us in the north now i will not mention states but i mentioned a few states i told him you see all the traits it came from the church 
we've not interacted so much with the world we are victims of the sermons of preachers that's what made our parents irresponsible some of you as you are seated now you love god but you had to beg to death for your school fees and your father has not even called you to ask you whether your school fees is paid and your father is a pastor so imagine somebody he has been mentoring for 10 years who is about to get married next week he's going to reproduce that same result imbalance is a dangerous thing so i train you in the aspect of prayer i train you in the aspect of your spiritual life you climb scripture but i do not teach you the principles of the word and you think because you are excelling in one area you trivialize another area let me tell you how to know a man of god is arrogant the moment you trivialize the contribution of others in the body is a sign you need deliverance no matter how anointed you are is blindness you need deliverance I was in Yola, I think, when the, people, the uh, uh, radio station wanted to do an interview for me. They were so happy I had come for a great crusade. And they were asking me a question. And they said, man of God, now that you have come into this city, you have come to do, you know, great and mighty things, this city will never be the same. And they were asking me a few questions, the secret of your anointing, what do we expect? And I told them something. I said, I will never discuss my success and impact as a man of God outside of the universal contribution of the church in yola there are men and women of god doing mighty things for god we may be in different dimensions but we are a team building together so i will not come to tear down what the pastors are doing to mean you guys have been doing nonsense here i come apostle joshua selman i've come to show you the rubbish you see that's the mistake all over the world you watch it on tv and you see men of god with their pride they approach truth as though they are the ultimate custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom and you know my fear many of us young people are gullible we are running away and it's clear that certain areas of their lives are bankrupt because they have refused to allow the holy spirit step there so we see people who are prayer warriors but they are poor they are dying so they are bribing here and there but they will keep quiet and then come and make noise and then we have others who money is their obsession is their god they never even get it they are on their way to hell they trivialize every kind of thing let me tell you how to know a good church a man of god who has been given the gift of balance or knows how to outsource relevant people in the body of christ to create what his grace cannot provide is a good church to be part of everybody say balance those of us here in ministry or trusting god for ministry it must be your heartfelt prayer seek balance more than oratory seek balance more than oratory the ability to speak grammar is nonsense if what you are giving people is rubbish balance i will never pastor people who will be imbalanced it's a covenant i made with god i will teach you everything to build your life holistically you will you can be a prayer warrior a miracle worker a man of character a billionaire a kingdom addict that's right that's how it should be he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breath equal in height no exaggeration that's the lamb's wife any other thing is not the lamb's wife so there are many of us seated right now we are victims of the imbalance of many sincere men and women of god whose messages we have listened to are we together now maybe they have been your pastors growing up maybe they are your mentors and spiritual fathers and whatever it is and i love the body of christ but you have to be careful there is no single man who has the blueprint of all the dealings of god we see in part and we prophesy in part so i must be able to have the unashamedness to let you know as a body although functioning in the office of the apostle that that office gives me the privilege of oversight of the dealings of god as revealed to a dispensation but even at that it cannot be in isolation i'm a product of many anointings i'm a product of many graces i have sat down to pay attention to people some of them i don't even like but i listen to them with an open heart to find out what dimension was committed to them 
that's the secret of growth this pride this unilateral pride that you catch a dimension you say oh for me i've caught a dimension of kingdom wealth and prosperity and when you hear them talking about the word of god you say no no no, no. all i know is that i'm a businessman it will land you in hot water i'm a prayer warrior ah this and that and that is prayer prayer i know prayer can do everything and before you know it you're like do you know how many believers are frustrated they don't just have the courage to come out that's why our states we left our states to the devil that's what i was sharing with him when we we're coming most of the northern states are largely they do not have adults who understand kingdom at the helm of government anybody does everything it came from the church it is that lack of teaching that can make any tom dick and harry get up and bring up any kind of thing against the church because there are no strategic people we are there wallowing away please pray i feel like we should pray and say lord i insist that my life will be balanced lift your voice i insist sharato sakataya lord where i've been a victim of imbalance or where i have communicated the same sincerely i pray that you help me please cry from the depth of your heart i receive grace for balance i receive grace for balance the bible says all scripture not part all scripture not new testament all scripture not old testament all scripture is god breathed all scripture inspired by the holy spirit and is profitable all scripture is profitable for reproof for correction for doctrine for instruction in righteousness all scripture all principles shared in the word of god are for the benefit of the church all scripture lift your voice and pray lord i close my heart to imbalance i open up my heart because i know that therein lies the key to my victory therein lies the key to my being useful to the kingdom i will not walk in the error of imbalance and i will not mislead multitudes pray correct my imbalance correct my imbalance it's made my children beg for bread correct my imbalance it's made me rich but lukewarm spiritually correct my imbalance it's made me trivialize spiritual exercises correct my imbalance hallelujah please be seated Matthew chapter 5 this is a very powerful teaching already Matthew chapter 5 14 to 16 the words of Jesus teaching at the Beatitudes this is what Jesus said ye are the light of the world Jesus is speaking now how many of you know when Jesus is speaking you listen to him greater than any prophet greater than any apostle past present future Jesus the apostle of our faith he says ye are the light of the world you know i love jesus you know we never study what he really taught the people we just know he taught them we don't pay attention to what he taught them this is jesus now having a conference three days men were on the mountain hearing jesus teach and in one of his sermons this is what he told them ye are the light of the world then he says a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid next verse says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel it says but on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house read on then it says permit your light permit your light permit the fruit of the illumination you said you fasted permit what came upon you from the fasting to so shine before men you claim you are titan permit the fruit to so shine before who not angels before men that they those men who have been mocking your god will see your good 
not good intentions replace the word good works with one word results let your light so shine before men that they may see your results right and then glorify your father see how god is glorified let men watch you from the beginning of your engaging the world usually they'll be laughing at you when you are doing it like noah noah being warned hebrews 11 being warned of rain he ran he trembled with fear gathered gopher wood for 100 years he was building they were laughing at him stupid man you just threw away your career just because you had the voice of a ghost but he was engaging it when the last animal entered god locked that door and the bible said the heavens released their water the earth released their water whoever was in between was a sign that he was disobedient the same way the bible says the heaven of many people will be brass and then under will be iron do you know what it means to stay in the middle of brass and iron that they may see your results god is interested listen please brothers and sisters your primary motivation behind getting results should not just be a pressure for achievement are we together now this is the mistake behind just um, now there is a place for motivating people don't get me wrong but this is the the mistake that many people make if the entire scope of your teaching is just to motivate people so you make them do great things for themselves when I realized that my success is also a message that enthrones Christ, I, I stopped paying attention to only my secret place. I started paying attention even to my results. Because both your personal growth and the results you produce, the Bible says it can glorify the name of Christ. When we heard all of them coming to testify, I saw some of you standing. I saw some of you clapping with all your heart jesus was being glorified they were thanking me but really jesus was being glorified are you seeing that now because something was taught they believed it they applied it it worked for them hearing is our father glorified pastor alpha when your results begin to glorify god so the way you glorify god is not just by singing alone you can sing songs but god wants your life please hear me everyone God wants your life to give him glory. As a father, by the time you have preached on the principles of fatherhood, and then people watch your life, your children are responsible. Are we together now? There's food in your house. You are not worse than an infidel because you can cater for your family. You are responsible. There's peace with your wife. No boxing anybody in the name of, that's how we do it in our village. You see, Christ is being glorified someone comes to your home and reads many scriptures without opening the bible he knows that jesus is the prince of peace has never believed a man and a woman can live for two years without quarreling and they are seeing it for the first time your light is shining before men they are seeing it and they are glorifying the recession has been whipping and biting people hook line and sinker when someone comes to your house and you hold the hands of your wife and say look let's quiz he's been crying the child is, is i mean there's a problem this child is about to be thrown from school how much is the school fees Forty thousand. okay take how much is your rent again One hundred and twenty thousand. okay the lord has led us this is one hundred and fifty thousand. and you say at this time of recession sorry is it borrow or give no 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 not borrow the lord bless you freely we have received from him freely we give madam are you in agreement absolutely i love my husband that person lives with that money and a message that recession is not a personal language there are people who have been exempted since it's not just this year they were exempted since are we together when people are dying left and right like chickens dying left and right like chickens you have a dream someone slaps you you wake up from your head to your toe is paralyzed the doctors check they tell you well something is wrong or nothing is wrong and then you are dying are we together now something is mocking god there and then all of a sudden you find out something in the world and you engage it and you clear that devil off your body 
are we together and you get up like our sister was standing strong you have demonstrated something the victory of Christ hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold you You seated in majesty. You are the reason, King. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You have won the victory. after me when I produce results Jesus is glorified say it again when I produce results Jesus is glorified I want you to say it for the last time convincingly when I produce results Jesus is glorified let me tell you make no mistakes about the fact that God wants your life. Do you know how obsessed God is with results? The two, two expressions in the Bible show that. Number one was the cursing of the fig tree. He came because the tree is eating from the earth. Is that not true? Connected to the earth. And it was green. Jesus was hungry. He ran there and found out the tree had been deceiving them. And he said... He cursed it and he said no fruit will grow from it again. And by the next day it withered. Number one. Number two was in Matthew 25. He used a parable to show how that he does not waste resources. He gave unto one five talents. Is that true? Two talents, one. The other foolish one said he went to bury it. And then when Jesus came, instead of him to say I'm sorry, I was careless, add one more year and I will show you I'm serious. He said I know you. That offense is the hallmark of men who never get results. They are angry at God and they are angry at those who are producing it. So they create theological explanations to excuse they are not producing results. I'm sure he had been saying, let Jesus come. I will see. When he came, he said, I know you. You are a hard man. You like reaping where you... So it's me you are using as a donkey. You see his mindset? He was not a steward. He wanted to be an owner. I know you. You want to use me to build your ministry. So I decided that uh, I even, I'm, you are even lucky that I buried it. Here is your talent. And he said, depart from me. He would have said, depart from me. Lousy and proud man. He said, wicked one, two, unprofitable servant. Cast into outer darkness. Where there is crying and gnashing of teeth. Look how Jesus is grave about a life that is barren. In the physical, when a man gets married to his wife, especially in Africa, when they give you two weeks, they have tried. After two weeks, everybody is looking. Is she coughing? No. Then somebody will just joke and say, we are waiting for Junior. They are speaking a subliminal message. After six months, even the man, the woman begins to be concerned. Are we together? Two years. Three years, they now tell the man, marry another wife. In other words, we hate unfruitfulness. And in as much as you pay dowry for this woman, return it and marry another woman. That's how much in our culture we love results. But when a life is barren, we say it's the will of God. And we create stupid explanations justified by scripture. I've told you the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach anything. That's why you can find the Bible in a herbal shrine. And the man will open to something, Psalms 2, and say, the Lord will laugh. And then after reading it, now concoct the charm and say, take it and, and watch it. That is still a charm.
are we together now God is interested in your results please make no mistakes about it when you walk in divine health and the older you get the fresher you become God is glorified critics may not be glorified but God is glorified and how many of you know there is only one person you owe explanation to your life God not critics not those who understand you or not that's none of their that's their business God be glorified when other people they say um, now young people are having high blood pressure and they test you and the doctor says it looks like you're a 10 year old child you say you are right doctor you are right age is just a number the word of God renews me is it not in your Bible they that be planted in the house of God he said they shall flourish in the courts of our God in old age they shall be fat and flourishing not wrinkled and dying whipped by life no are we together how many young people in Nigeria look at do you know um, I, I sometimes do you know how people are suffering in Nigeria right now and are you seeing how several of us preachers are so unconcerned about the plight of people we never bring relevant teachings that help to address their pain a man treks with his wife and five children loyal he's a sanctuary keeper in your church he treks with his wife from a place maybe like paladin and treks and comes and they are scrubbing the church with joy hoping that you would teach them what to bail them out and then you come up and trivialize their problems and say it does not matter the most important thing is that you serve God and God says no no you are making me selfish the kingdom works when you seek him first but then there is a provision for your welfare too otherwise why will we not call God selfish the theology that we propose if not well balanced will make God look like such a selfish God we may not have the courage to say but it looks like Lord everything is about you so my whole life what is my own and God says I'm not like that I'm love while you were yet sinners I gave something for you if I offered my son will I not much more with him freely give you all things in other words if you are not getting it is your pastor it's not me Joshua Selman is lying to you somewhere You go to churches and watch people come and meet the pastor and say, Pastor, five of my children, their school fees are not paid. I love you. I'm the prayer band leader in my church. My rent has expired. And he looks and says, look, that's not the issue. The most important issue is what shall separate you from the love of God. That's true. And after praying, because the pastor himself is not rich enough or too greedy to do it, he may have the money in his account, but he's too greedy to release 300,000. And will not teach the people what happens do you know most times this kind of wrong teaching the only people who benefit are the pastors because at the end of preaching that error I'm standing with a nice suit there's food for me oh I don't know whether there's food for you but there's food for me after koinonia this night I don't know whether you people will be trekking but all I know is that there is a car taking me home are you seeing that I don't know whether you are going to be sleeping outside I will be lying down under AC enjoying myself I must be a wicked man of God to be walking in that dimension and not respond to your pain who lives in Nigeria now and ignores the reality of the fact that people need the dimension of God that can respond to their succor. They call religion the opium of the masses. They call it a strategy to take advantage of the masses because it was wrongly communicated. Everywhere the gospel was received, it brought civilization. It not only built men spiritually, it changed their level. Say amen. Amen. I look at many of our mothers and some of our elderly people who are here and I look at the sacrifice they pay to wait this late there are some of you as you are seated right now you are young people maybe just working or a student or a graduate but your loved ones five of them they are depending on you to take care of them and you are not getting the key the little 10,000 you are getting is pushing you and now pastor because that's what we do as men of God we now say there is a contribution everybody is going to bring seven seven thousand you have ten thousand i forced you through messages and courses to bring three thousand to bring seven thousand the remaining three thousand you are in trouble and you are dying Edrimi, 
members are crying a good shepherd lays down his life does not keep his ego and allow people to die anybody who loves god and loves his people should if you cannot give all of them money share with them the principles and let them know that when you rise out of recession god is glorified and they glorified god in koinonia God is being glorified in several ways. You come in, you find people inside and outside, thousands following online. People say it does not matter. God says it matters. It matters to me. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, oh, Let our King be lifted up through our lives. Let my King be lifted up. Oh, oh, down results are not accidental please write it down we have agreed that it is important for our lives to bear fruit we have agreed that our results glorify God God is not only glorified in our worship and our sacrifices which is important he's not only glorified when we enthrone Christ at the seat of our lives he's glorified when we bear much fruit write this down results are not accidental semicolon they are the results of walking the mysteries of the kingdom you have to write this down results are not accidental they are the product of walking the principles the secrets the mysteries of the kingdom many results never happen in business results don't just happen in marriage results don't just happen in education results don't just happen in ministry in leadership results do not just happen which which debunks the fallacy that has been proposed for many years in the church if God wants it done he would do it it looks spiritual but it's very dangerous the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord the Bible says says but the earth has he given to the sons of men and he gave them a command he says and he blessed them and saying be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion so if anything is to happen in my life I must be a contributor to making it happen see let me tell you something admit this sincere truth and your life will change nothing of value is free nothing of value is free it is either paid by you or paid by someone for you nothing of true value bishop oedeko made this statement many years ago nothing of value nothing of value is free that's why you don't pay you pay school fees even for marriage as free as it is you pay dowry they write a list and give you even if it's your uncle that grew up with you every day and say uncle i've been looking at your daughter he says all right get a clean sheet of paper buy rice buy yam you would think you will be forgiven no no matter how much you are forgiving you will pay in kind in cash or both nothing of value is free meaning if you are not ready to pay the price for your success forget about it 
there is a price please understand this don't let anybody indoctrinate you into believing your life will change in the sweet by and by there is a price for the outcome of your life what you see today by the grace of god was intentionally done there's nothing accidental about what god is doing by his grace and there are many men and women here by the grace of god i had the privilege to see their lives i saw them engage these things and i see the results that are speaking now say my results must speak say it again my results must speak results are not accidental they are a product right you must engage something engage something you must do something there is always something to do good master what should i do to be saved that's the freest thing we know in the new testament salvation but here's how a man got it good master what should i do believing is doing something believing is not cheap it takes it takes the labor of the word for a man to believe as free as believing looks you have to get it good master what should i do to be saved that's a good businessman no wonder he was rich what should i do the poor one just had mercy on me but the wealthy man knew he must do something he must engage something psalm 25 verse 14 what is what how are results produced what is really the mystery behind results in the kingdom please write this down results are produced when we have access to and understand secrets comma mysteries principles results are produced when we have access to and understand secrets mysteries principles the laws of the kingdom were designed to reflect the justice system of god and the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne righteousness and justice at the foundations of his throne so the bible says this david a man who was a mighty man never conquered in any war great man did several great things for the kingdom this is what he has to say the secret of my exploit is that the secret of the lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants ah, there are secrets brothers and sisters how many of you have a Jimmy's wife is here excellent excellent um, baker confectionery person she can make anything cake if you want her to draw your face she can draw it on the cake I mean anything at all you want her to draw koinonia she can draw it on the cake absolutely fantastic but do you know that if I meet hope now and I say hope show me how to make cake she will show the general thing because I'm not serious most likely because I didn't pay for it as she's talking I'll be answering the question sorry sorry this that's the teacher so she keeps those things as secrets and there will be a condition for her to reveal it it's worthy of being revealed but not to everybody so God hid certain things they are not in the outer court he calls them secrets there are things that are at plain sight you see it but there are things you will read your bible and never see it they are called the secrets of the lord the bible says they are with them that fear him and he will show you so god will call you like a conference room you know how you meet a millionaire and he says you've served well come i will take you to a room you've never gotten to and i will show you brothers and sisters you see this my life is a product of this secrets mysteries god will take you and tell you look this is what produces this when you do this it will happen when you do this this is how satan will strike forget about him just do this one and it will take care of him you rise up from those secrets and say i have it look when you say you have dominion it's not that you are a talkative dominion means you are privy to an understanding 
the American president moves. You don't see him moving with bulletproof around. Try to shoot him before your gun gets there, you are dead. Because there is a secret. You don't know. There is something about US intelligence that is beyond the plain sight. You insult him in the secret. Someone knocks your door and says, you are needed in the police station. You say, me? What did I do? You say, well, just, you, you will find out. Because there is an intelligence system. Do you teach Americans U.S. intelligence? No. They are Americans, but they don't have access to that intelligence. There are people who are taken to a camp that is never shown on TV. And they train them rigorously. There's something they call war college in Nigeria. Is that true? They take men there. Only God knows what happens. Just like there are secret prisons. When you are a capon and you are a nuisance to society, they drag you. It's inside the river. The prison is inside the river. You escape, it's still the same thing. You die there. Are we together? The secret things. Brothers and sisters, what do you know that gives you confidence? Don't do bold face before life if you are not holding anything. Don't stand before Pharaoh if you have not seen the burning bush. You will die like a chicken. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Please sit down. Job 29. Long reading. 4 to 20, please. Are you learning something this night? Results are predictable. Results are not accidental. Seeing then that God is glorified when my life produces results, then I must pay attention to the principles and the mysteries that are responsible for producing those results. Here's what Job said. Job, he said, as I was in the days of my youth, Huh? read on when the the secret of the Lord there was a time I was a poor young man and God I did something that made God come to me and he said Job come let me show you something let me show you what makes people influential and he showed him he said the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle like a library that you read let's see the effects of his access to that secret reading down to 20 quick reading please media help us Verse 6. He says, help, help him please. When I wash my steps with butter, what brought that effect? Secrets. And the rock poured out rivers of oil. The rock does not pour oil, but there is a mystery that makes it happen. When I went out to the gates, holding these mysteries brothers and sisters he said when i prepared my seat in the street eight the young men saw me accessing this mystery and the bible says they hid themselves they said this guy is not a normal human being what is he trading on that is producing these supernatural results and the agent arose and they stood up do you know what it means for an elderly person to stand up before a child remember as a young man the princes refrained from talking and laid their hands on their mouth verse 10 the young men saw me and hid themselves uh, you're going back again please help us the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth uh-huh when the ear heard of me it blessed me brothers and sisters this is what happens to a man who accesses this thing any man and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me next verse because i delivered the poor that cried when god was teaching me those secrets he showed me something so every time i saw the poor i didn't sympathize with them i delivered them there was something i did to the poor the fatherless and him that had none to help him uh-huh the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me someone was about to die till i showed up i did something and he blessed me and i caused the widow's heart to sing for joy 14. i put on righteousness and it clothed me my judgment was as a robe and a diadem i was eyes to the blind and feet was i to the lame uh-huh I was a father to the poor and the cause for which I knew not I I was humble is part of the reason why I was great every time I saw result and I did not see it in my life I didn't argue and explain it away I humbled myself like a scientist and I searched it out 
18 okay 17 and I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil from his teeth that's authority brothers and sisters when I searched it out I found something that granted me access to break it in the, and then I said I shall die in my nest in peace and I shall multiply my days as the sand part of the secret something was shown to me of how a man can live a fruitful life and how I can add to my days Hezekiah did it there was something he touched that multiplied his days that means there's something you can touch that will shorten your days you are supposed to live 100 you do something it takes it to 85 some of us now have done it to 40 you better learn what takes it back <laughs> learn what takes it back fast <laughs> before you find out you have two more years you learn it that is in your Bible please let's go back to 18 18 please right and I shall multiply my days I will do it ah like saying I will fry egg I will multiply my days see how we fear death yet a man was saying, do you know in all of in all of Job's trouble he never talked about death in other words he knew that look look we are discussing life here it's just that this is the worst form of life but death is another law just leave that one these guys trivialize Satan they made nonsense of him our generation is so bankrupt of secrets so Satan masquerades as such a great man I always give this example have you seen someone lying somewhere saying his father is a director he's a CEO just because nobody who grew up with him knew him the moment he sees you coming and you know him you say this guy why are you here you are here to bust my tire now Satan only talks when there are people with ignorance there are some of us when he sees us he will refrain because we know you are number one you are not omnipresent you are not omnipotent you are a liar you're a thief you walk with people's minds if I, have, if I have a dream and I see somebody with gun wanting to shoot me and all these funny things, if I get up, I'm not even going to pray about it. Not because I'm just doing bold face. I understand that Satan, without the cooperation of your mindset, his hands are useless. If your mindset limits the word, why wouldn't it limit Satan? Your mindset limited the word of God. How much more Satan? So all, all those things are nonsense. You see, that revelation alone gives me sound sleep. If an owl is crying in front of my, my, my window, it can cry till morning. As far as I'm concerned, you're a creature. You're a creature. Whatever spirit is in you is not recognized. When an owl starts barking, then I'll come out and check because it's unusual. But for as long as you are doing what you are doing, I will sleep. Gone are the days you come out and say, in the name of this owl, I'm tired of you. And, you know, my root was spread out by the waters listen to this and the dew lay all night upon my branch 20 my glory was fresh in me and my bow the symbol of my strength and authority was renewed this is a man who gave a secret and he said the reason why this happened was that the secrets of the Lord were upon his tabernacle. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. A king had a dream, forgot the dream and the interpretation and wanted to kill everybody because he was angry. And something happened. Daniel chapter 2. We're reading from verse 15. We'll jump, 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 jump. I'll show you the scriptures. 15. So they were, they were going to kill Daniel and his, you know, his friends and all of that. And he answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the, the thing known to Daniel. The king was angry. Anybody who cannot tell me the dream I had, I will kill him. 19. And Daniel went in. 19. 19. Then was the everybody says secret then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision and Daniel blessed the God of heaven read from verse 20 we'll continue 
so daniel went to bed and saw that secret daniel answered and said blessed be the name of god forever for wisdom and might are his next verse next verse please down to 22 he and he changed the times and seasons and removed kings and set up kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him that's the god we serve and that's what he can do to men read 27 and 28 27 and 28 i'm trying to show you these scriptures listen daniel answered in the presence of the king and said the secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men comma find out whether you are part of these people so you just know up hand that you will never find the secret of god it's not for wise men men in their wisdom the astrologers comma the magicians comma the soothsayers all these men cannot see it show one to the king 28 but there is a god in heaven hallelujah <laughs> ah, yeah. the native doctor cannot see it oh. he will claim he can see it because he will concoct charm and a voice will speak through the pot he will manipulate your mind into believing he's in absolute control Daniel said don't mind them they can't see it he said but there is a God in heaven and it is in his character to reveal secrets he revealed secrets and made known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall happen in the latter days open my eyes let me see will you open my eyes let me see open my eyes let me see open my eyes is full of men and women who did ordinary things and then once and again certain strange men just appear and it's like a graph extraordinary exploits by the hand of God then you find ordinary men again then someone will show up in a generation then you find people doing whatever again and then you show up let me tell you something I have spent my life like an astrologer watching the stars I have spent my life searching out the mysteries of the kingdom since I found out that these were the things that were responsible for results I don't trust men I don't trust their philosophies 80% of the knowledge circulated in the world is useless to your life and destiny and eternity I don't trust them I don't trust the things they say in the news I go to the Word of God show me the mystery that will give me grace show me the mystery many people let me tell you before god granted me grace to walk in the anointing there were many people who were talking about the anointing when i looked at their lives not to condemn them i knew these guys were not they didn't get this thing but they will never understand and you can meet them and ask them uh -uh, but why didn't this result happen instead of them to say well i don't know this far they say look it's because of this i didn't trust them and i went to god i said lord there must be an answer the thing i did not know i searched out i searched out lord why are some people filled with the holy ghost and others not lord why can a preacher be so anointed filled with the holy ghost yet his church never grows why is it that people can do publicity put balloons and it will never happen lord why is it that a man can serve you so much and yet be broke and worried about finances and god started referring me to his body various men and women who through their sacrifices have accessed these things though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river listen though we are few that's what i want you to hear we're surrounded by many we're surrounded by many surrounded by many surrounded by many they are all over your pride has stopped you from seeing them we're surrounded by many 
who have crossed that river before when people tell you they have not been sick in a long time you don't believe it because you think it's a lie no 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 it's a lie when people tell you they have not been broke they will never be broke again he says it's not true you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before you are not the first to be attacked by witches my father's mother well i don't know they, they said she was a christian i know she was an idol worshiper praise god are we together my father not my relative you see when you hear people talk you think they don't know witchcraft me that demons pressed personally it's not like the one you are not seeing anybody you are just feeling hand i saw them i they looked at me i looked at them they pressed me shouted jesus nothing happened i was still a preacher i shouted jesus shouted blood of jesus it had no effect on them but preachers told me just shout jesus something will happen i did it nothing happened the secrets of the lord there is more to that statement than just you have been shouting it nothing happened don't we have few <laughs> we're surrounded by many the same way the bible says they shall lay hands on the sick brothers and sisters be honest the last person you laid hands on what happened you even you you were laughing at yourself but the bible says if you do it you see when the bible tells you to do something and get results and you do it and don't get results there is more to it there is more to it the same way you see someone driving you think he's just putting gear and firing you enter and the next thing you are in the hospital because it's more than what your eyes are seeing father as i read scriptures what am i not seeing open my eyes see when you carry the bible just like a scientific book bring you all your tights into the house and you have been tightened but nothing has happened because all you have been doing is giving god tight see let me tell you something brothers and sisters your attitude is the tray upon which your tight must be presented upon for it to be accepted a tight can be rejected there is an acceptable worship honor an attitude so many people stand with their envelope you look at the preacher and you are angry lift it up father in the name of jesus you just throw it inside the plate and you are angry these wicked people my tight you they say did you tight you say yes no you didn't tight you brought money to church i guarantee you you just gave tight you didn't bring you brought money to church but there is somebody who goes with understanding lord you brought this to me first i love you two i'm obedient i know you are not a liar so i bring this with understanding and you tie it are we together now with understanding do you know many people give there are people who come to give give here as if they are bribing they just say apostle god has blessed you and then they are putting their hands in their pocket and then they squeeze my hand and want to and say what is this this is not a bribe if you are giving give it with understanding let me speak a word of prayer don't give as if you are bribing me i'm not looking for the money you see the attitudes we display these are the things that disqualify our giving a man preaches you want to give him honorarium you wait till he enters the car then you just look and say sorry pastor and while other people are talking you just say take 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 We're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. It's time for you to start learning why these things are not working. Brothers and sisters, I've opened your eyes that there are secrets. There are secrets. There's a secret that brings a crowd to a ministry. The secret is not publicity. I, we have proven this with all humility and by the grace of God if all you want to do is publicity you will waste money on posters and flyers and balloon and everything there is a secret this is to the miraculous it's not just shouting you know a lot of people see us shout here and then they go to their ministries they clash the symbol 
everybody at the count of three you're going to shout Jesus one like a charm two oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. And, and everybody shout and they're looking around because we'll do it again and then at the end they say okay don't worry you didn't fast you didn't have unbelief it's not in all those motions there is more than meets the eye are we together there are three areas I want you to contend to know the secrets we're going to pray three areas especially in this season God wants to be glorified through the church number one number one the secret to accessing the presence and the anointing of God upon a man's life and upon a corporate body the secret the law that governs the manifestation of the presence of God and authentic unction upon the life of a man and upon a system you must cry and contend to know the secrets that are responsible for this number two are you ready you must find out the secret listen please very careful the secret to living in divine health and longevity write it down what is the key that governs not just divine health but longevity there's too much fear of death I began to study there are seven things that I studied in my life trusting God for the secrets but of these seven these three are the ones the Lord revealed to me and said let my people get this knowledge in these three areas I show you the key to peace especially in these times of turmoil health and longevity is there a system in God where a man can walk healthy brothers and sisters if I were pretending this thing you will know by now I can't be sick and come up here and act well you will see it you will know you will know that this thing is a lie I don't count we have doctors all around we've taught it here we're a very responsible ministry I've visited people in hospitals but I'm saying don't be ashamed of your current understanding but content knowing that there is a reality if you don't believe there is a realm of health and wholeness do you believe that there is an anointing to heal HIV do you believe that the testimonies you've been hearing here that people have been healed of diseases that means you don't believe it are you seeing that now how can a man want the healing anointing and you do not believe divine health and longevity is true it means you are a liar you are only playing games if I sit down on a wheelchair for a number of years and one leg is not strengthened and they tell you I can stand up and then the leg will receive strength I say no 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 scientifically this is not working why should you be given a healing anointing to stand in a stadium and command people in wheelchairs where you have not seen you see some legs they cut someone else's leg to join in the current person's leg yet you believe he can walk oh come on I'm a believer oh. I'm a believer I'm a believer when you dwell in God's presence it's easy to believe when you keep listening to junks and nonsense you will be surprised how you will not believe God because when you talk all the people who are in your area you say no no you are being fanatical you people these Christians but no 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 I am the way I am reality the truth anything that is not me is a lie I am reality longevity you need to live long listen listen do you know why many people fear death it's not because they are afraid of death in itself they are afraid because they cannot control it anything you cannot control you are afraid of you are about to travel some of you will be traveling tomorrow to various places you are sweating somebody says come and collect money in Kaduna and return you say ah it's not worth it let me travel 
because of 40 minutes drive let me die send it through an account i will collect it somewhere i say my bank is not inside i said no problem just do it fear i refuse to fear in the name of jesus christ i refuse to fear there is a mystery that keeps men long number three wealth and prosperity kingdom wealth and prosperity you must study the secret of financial empowerment at a personal level and at a corporate level those of us who are pastors here in churches you must find out what is the key I've told you the key is not business the key is not business the key is not business business is an expression of what you know business is simply a platform that gives your understanding expression without that understanding the platform is useless the key is not business the key is an understanding a construction first in your spirit and then your understanding and then all the physical avenues are simply platforms whether job business whatever you call them do you believe what i'm sharing with you or are you still arguing it like many people will argue and say it does not work by god's grace i have paid the price to study these things in my own personal life i still am studying them but to an extent i have seen the hand of god and to an extent we have seen this even in this ministry i hate speaking sometimes because of this because people who don't understand think we are boasting and all of that no we will never beg as a ministry till jesus comes never there's no need we'll be wicked if we do so because he has been faithful too faithful too faithful our dinner is on sunday there is recession melting people down yet we are celebrating our workers and we are doing it with all gladness when we shared we looked at the budget of the dinner some of the people even the leaders some of them were a bit surprised a budget that can build house for somebody you are now using it to eat in one night that's what happens when you pay attention my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from you that's somebody's salary for many years spent in one night to tell workers thank you recession is hitting hard and melting down we have never stopped transporting people we don't boast to have arrived but it's a sign that this thing works i'm saying this to encourage you that it can work brothers look at me there is this plague that is sweeping nigeria and sweeping young men young men are afraid young men that are supposed to be bold you go to school and struggle for years but you are still moving around as if you've never seen the wall of a school why because of fear fear looms many young men what will i do someone sent me a text i think it was day before yesterday that he doesn't know why he married i said what is what is the meaning of that you are sending a text you don't know why you married yet the recession has not started This thing has been prophesied by several men of God. I say it, I, I listen to the messages, I prophesied it. I told you people, those who are announcing that it's going to come and be over. I respect every, I don't condemn any man and any ministry. But brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth by the grace of God. It is not going to end. Not soon. I guarantee you. It will be worse. I have seen it with my two eyes like I'm seeing you. But upon them that fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings therefore shall you discern between them that fear god and them that feareth him not there is a difference hallelujah we'll keep rising from glory to glory may you never lack food to eat in your house that you have to carry a plate to move around and beg for rice there is a way you come out or that you sit down and you are saying ah somebody a devil just cheaply appears in your dream fires an arrow to your body and you wake up the next day and all of a sudden you know you are going to your grave let me speak to someone here you are having dreams dead men dead things you are quietly sleeping they are feeding you in the night whether you want to eat or not all those things let me tell you there is a place for deliverance but the greater part of deliverance is access to understanding you know i told you these things happened to me most preachers will lie to you and say it didn't happen 
most people will tell you lies and say it happened to me brothers and sisters I sleep in the night they press me once it's night night I get afraid do you know it was so bad eh, Jimmy I can hear people talking physically but I can't wake up no I can't wake up so you are not the first it's happening to the day I caught the light I ran I ran from maybe you here to BZ and I stood outside and I begged the spirit to come I didn't cast it I begged it to come I cast it in Zaria it goes to another city when we go I drive it from there you play ball with the spirit city to city that's what light does but many people will not get the light and then they say in the name of Jesus I won't dream you even fast as you are rounding the last fast in ignorance then they come you see the devil can make nonsense you think I don't know that's the experience of some of us three days dry the first day nothing happens the second day says walk you know and then the last day as you are saying amen you just drink orange and sleep just orange and there they come <laughs> they rubbish your three days fasting so you now get up and say Kai this man must be using charm this thing is not only fasting there, there must be something there is a key or you now carry your Bible and put it in your pillow right carry oil and put sign of the cross on your head I'm not mocking you no, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not mocking you anything done without revelation is nonsense you can even play koinonia message while he's playing you are sleeping nothing works in itself it is engaged hallelujah praise the Lord I remember when I was studying some of the things that God has helped me know now do you know I arrogantly argued with some of them because in my little mind then I felt no these things are not the way when some of these generals wrote these things and I looked at them I said is it really this thing it's not it doesn't match how foolish I was now I look and I I truly see that I deserved where I was if I had known the things that I knew now maybe a few years earlier than I knew them I probably would have been ten times better than I am and that time sadly there were not many people around who had really gotten this keys. Everybody was trying. Some of us had the privilege to be the ones leading people. And so as you were leading, you were just hoping you were right. May you walk with accuracy. That if you receive a text now, listen, you receive a text now as I'm speaking. And someone says, we are waiting for you in front of your house. You must die this night. You won't see us. But we have said something good day some people will just say i feel like praying around here that's what i used to do hallelujah a gentleman went to steal recently in my house he got charm from zaria city tied it got charm tied it they still caught him Can you imagine? While Koinonia was going on, he was trying to steal. They still caught him. He shall put his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings, lest you dash your feet against a stone. I know you don't believe it. You just say, oh yes, yes. But you must believe it and say, this is true. So a man looks at you and threatens you and say, if both of us wake up tomorrow, you must die. And you say, you know you will sleep too, Abi. Tell him. The person boasting you are not doing night vigil you too you will be you will be sleeping for six hours you will not know what is happening where is the angel of death that swept over arrogant egypt and some people did not wake up any man playing with your life and prophesying to you is playing with death in the name of the lord jesus christ don't fear men don't let any man threaten you because of anything you threaten god's elect he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm brothers and sisters you are immune but this thing is not just hearsay please every lady lay your hands on your womb prophesy to yourself in one minute and say me and barrenness are like the east and the west we will never meet go ahead and pray there's a reason why i'm saying that lay your hands on your womb and prophesy no barrenness do 
don't let anybody tell you oh it's because everybody is eating spaghetti now we are eating this and cancer is multiplying fibroid is multiplying cause it god is glorified in my body i have no business with barrenness this womb will carry boys and girls prophesy to yourself don't call what they call conspiracy conspiracy hallelujah brothers lay your hands on your head and say the secrets of wealth must come upon me lift your voice and pray in one minute lord you are showing me the secrets God is giving me a great ministry there's much to do for the kingdom I don't have the time to be thinking about money no it's a cost I don't have the time to leave my assignment leave everything money 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 grant me grace to get this key and move on to do important kingdom things in my life can't spend 60 years of my life just daydreaming and being obsessed about money Canality over money show me the keys let me not put anybody's daughter under trouble let me not raise children and punish them because of ignorance please pray you will thank me for what you are doing today lord i'm tired this thing has a way there is a way out show it to me there is a way out oh there is a way out hallelujah now everyone i want you to pray while you are seated will soon stand up but i like you to command every area of your life that has not been working don't just command it to work say lord the secret to make it work please show me even if it's something that has been taught but my eyes have not seen show it to me Sato Sabalakata. my spiritual life is going down and down and down i can't pray for 10 minutes i've tried and tried and tried there is a devil somewhere trying to stop me lord what is the secret to a consistent prayer life what is the secret to a consistent word life i'm tired of this not studying the word i've been lying to people that i study my bible i know i'm not studying it i don't have an appetite for god something is wrong show me the secret Shabbat Akalabata. I pray and nothing happens I say the same thing anointed people say but nothing happens what is the key to the anointing coming into my life let me speak and let there be results for your glory pray for your health Lord I'm tired I've spent over 100,000 on my body this year I've spent over 500,000 I don't even know what is wrong with me now I know you desire to be glorified in my body I'm tired of being afraid of death I'm a man of God but I fear death I'm a woman of God but I fear death I fear assaults of terrorism I fear accidents I fear the operations of witches and wizards there's something I need to know I'm tired of living in fear pray pray I'm tired of going to my village because I think I will not come back 2017 I'm tired that they may charm me oh give me access give me access give me access Access, pray. Soparika tekete, rakoshada, lekaria soto baria tabala tabala. Longevity, Lord, let me be as as confident as I am sitting on my seat to know I will live long. Let me be confident. And the secret was revealed to Daniel and the secret was revealed to Daniel and the secret was revealed to Daniel finally pray I must break the back of poverty is my agreement with God is my covenant with God to the fourth generation no one has prospered in my family 
until they serve idols i will not serve idols and i will prosper for the glory of the name of the lord i will not serve idols and i will prosper i will not bribe and i will prosper i will not cheat and i will prosper i will not play fraudulence and i will prosper there is a secret that must be shown to me I know I'm a young man, but I must prosper. Employment or no employment, recession or no recession, there is a secret. Show it to me, oh God. Now jump on your feet and pray for any other area that has refused to work. I challenge you, show me the secret. Why have I not entered a relationship, oh God? Why are men running away from me? Show it to me. So when I gather, it scatters. When I gather, it scatters. Show me why, although I've been delivered, I'm still seeing family patterns in my life. The failures of my father's house is still reflecting in my life, although I'm praying in tongues. For the next three minutes, pray in the spirit, blasting tongues. Something must open in the heavens. Something must open. Lord, I must deliver my family. I must deliver my lineage. Tired of poverty. Tired of struggling. Tired of a resultless Christian life. Tired of a life burden of the anointing. Lord, it's not working in my life. I have to admit it this night. Pray, it's not working. Why is it not working? Why is it not working? Why is it not working? I knock on the gates of heaven. I demand an explanation. Nobody is rising in my family. Nothing is working. They serve you, yet no door is open. Oh, pray, pray, don't be tired. Leketeka soto la ba 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 ba. Embretos kapras kalekete. Shakata pras kalakato shakalika. Embreso sete dekete. Mambro zekete kelebo soto ba la ba la ba. Hallelujah. Hearing is my father glorified. When you bear much fruit. Listen. Listen. I want you in the next one minute to pray violently. Knock on the door that controls results. And say Lord for your glory. It's my, it's my turn to testify. I told you nothing happens. For everyone that asks it, receive it. Lord, I've never really had a testimony this year. Why is that so? No one has favored me. No door has opened. No deliverance has happened. Lord, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to pray and knock on the door of heaven. Your heart is already right with God. I know that. But I want you to agree with God and say, Lord, between now and Christmas, when we celebrate your coming, can you give me a reason to praise your name this year? I tell you, if you, if you obey this instruction and pray with your heart, you will be surprised what my God will do. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I agree with you. Shapata. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Ay, 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 ay. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Open strange doors. Do it for your glory. Surprise my father. Surprise my mother. Surprise them. I intercede for them. May the angel of your presence reach them. Give them a miracle. Let that cancer be healed. Let that HIV be healed. Let that barrenness be broken. Let her take in before Christmas. Having a child already in a womb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone shout it self time in the name of Jesus. I decree that every force in the heavenlies programmed a sign to stop results from manifesting in my life to discourage my Christian life I challenge you by the blood of Jesus lift your voice and pray ancestral powers yokes spirits ordinances written in the heavenlies projected by witchcraft and wickedness to stop my life from glorifying God to stop results from happening in my life I challenge you I challenge you I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant Hallelujah. Let's take one more prayer point. I want us to release the ministry of angels. Listen. The Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? Let me tell you, hear me. Angels are real. I see them all the time. You will be foolish to believe angels are not real. Not everybody here seated physically in Koinonia is a human being. I have seen them many times as I preach. They sit down like human beings. They are not human beings. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. See some of you are still joking. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I am an heir of salvation. Therefore, I decree and I deploy the ministry of angels to every area of my life to war a warfare until I become victorious lift your voice and pray I release their ministry release my helpers to come into my 
my destiny. Release favor. I release angels. Over Koinonia. The angels assigned over Koinonia. We release you by the word of God. The angels assigned over God's people. We release you. We release you. We release you. We release you. In the name of Jesus. Bring miracles. Bring signs. Bring wonders. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but let's pray. The Holy Ghost is asking me that we challenge the spirit of fear. Look at me. Listen. Let me tell you something about the spirit of fear. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. Listen. Fear is a dangerous spirit. It stops you from taking God seriously. When God speaks, fear exposes you to the obvious limitations. It's not that they are not there. The obstacles are there. But God's word does not explain. It creates. God will not tell you how by next week you will be holding a million in your hand. Don't be stupid and say, God, how will it happen? Who do I know? Blessed is she that believes. He said, for unto her there shall be a performance. Fear of death. Listen. Fear of failure. Fear of not having the money to feed yourself. Do you know it's fear that make people do all kinds of foolish things? You are afraid before you know it, you sell your phone. Because you want 10,000 in your pocket. The 10,000 finishes, you sell your trouser. People sell all kinds of things. People have converted and have left God because of fear. In the name of Jesus, I challenge the spirit of fear over my life, over my family, over my loved ones, over Koinonia. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are banished from my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. There's no fear. There's no fear. I refuse to fear. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well. Say unto the righteous, Koinoni, are you praying tonight? Don't look around. Pray. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. of terrorism hallelujah self time in the name of Jesus father Every prophecy you spoke over my life from January till now that has not happened. I want you to know that I still believe you and I agree with you that between now and December 25th I must receive that testimony. Lift your voice and pray. I wrestle with prophecy. I agree. I agree. You said you will heal my father. I still believe. You said you will heal my mother. I still believe. You said you will prosper my business. Prosper my ministry. I still believe. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you.
I'm a believer. I'm a believer. When you dare to believe God and understand what it takes to get the results you need, I pray for you in the name that is above all names. First and foremost, even as you have prayed, I challenge every force of witchcraft that has been released over Nigeria, released over states to frustrate believers and make it look like God's word is not working. I command that power to bow in the name of Jesus. I command that power to bow in the name of Jesus. Number two, I pray for you. The kind of speed that you have not seen from January to now. I ask the God that I serve to give you that speed in the name of Jesus. That he will perform his word hastily. Hastily. In the name of Jesus. Number three. I pray for you with all my heart. Every secret you have been looking at but you have never really understood you look at it all the time but you are, you listen to the messages help them please but you have not gotten it i speak upon your spirit may an unction the unction that teaches men things i'm, I'm doing an impartation upon your spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus may that light shine upon your spirit May that light, that illumination shine upon your spirit. Any man on earth who is holding your answer, any physical man holding your answer, I put pressure upon their spirit. They must answer you. They must answer your parents. They must answer your loved ones. I pray for you finally every miracle we have received as a ministry this year whether it is in finances whether it is in increase whether it is in influence and impact I pray for you from the depth of my heart beginning from this night I don't care how short the time is I decree and I ask the Lord most high to reproduce that testimony in your life May he reproduce that testimony in your life. Anyone here, hold on please, who is sick in any part of your body, any nonsense the devil has planted, whether you call it fibroid, whether you call it menstrual pain, whether you say barrenness, impotency, whether you call it migraine, SS, AS, bad dreams, witchcraft any kind of sickness right now as i stand here in the name that is above all names may the fire of the holy ghost surge through your body and clear that devil out of your life may the fire of the holy ghost surge through help them please may the fire of the holy ghost my god I tell you, I see fire falling on people. That's what I see in the spirit. Fire. People are getting healed. May the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through your body and clear that devil right now. May the fire of the Holy Ghost, I say it again, standing upon this grace, may the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through your body and clean your blood and cleanse your life. Anyone here called SS, AS, I command that genotype change now. Any stranger you were not born with, if you were not born with it, breast lump, fibroid, ovarian cyst, any devil sitting on your body, your body must glorify God tonight. Therefore, I curse that devil. I curse that spirit. I curse that devil. I curse that spirit. 
everything that has stopped you from being productive i prophesy to your hands your hands represent they are symbolic of your productivity when the hands of samson were tied he could not do anything i pray for these hands may god teach you the mystery of profiting in the name of jesus he said i am the lord that teacheth thy hands to profit and leadest thou in the way that thou should go may god show you the mysteries may he show you in the name of jesus lift your voice and give jesus praise hallelujah please keep standing everyone our time is fast spent but keep standing hold on please there are people here right now who you've heard me preach we've spoken about glorifying god your life your family everything about you is not glorifying god number one you are not even born again and you know the kind of family you are coming from that already there are things that can destroy people's lives wherever you are you have heard my voice and the holy spirit is telling you this man of god is talking about you you need to come out and hand over your life to christ or peradventure at one point you have given your heart to jesus christ and sincerely you know from your heart that for whatever reason your life has gone haywire and you want to run to him please we have two minutes for you wherever you are it's my pleasure to lead you right now wherever you are inside and outside leave your seat quickly and come you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome are you still coming or you are arguing with jesus the holy ghost is speaking will you still argue with him keep coming god bless you those outside don't say i'm far the devil is a liar leave him and run and come run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain if you're joining them keep coming there are people outside Please hurry up and keep coming hurry up and keep coming hallelujah thank you so much for those of you who are out those still joining hurry up and come say after me lord jesus those of you standing please say it seriously say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe you are the son of god this night i have heard your word and i need help i ask you to help me i receive jesus into my heart as my lord and savior i receive your life and i declare that from today i'm a new creation i'm a new person in the name of jesus i pray for you now in the name of jesus father the bible says as many as who come to you you will in no wise cast away father change the lives of these people transform them sincerely in the name of jesus let this not be some emotional show that they are coming but let them mean it from their heart may your life be transformed in the name of jesus amen and amen now follow the lady waving her hands there's a lady waving her hands please follow her and um she would communicate a few details to you in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.